Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well in this video we're going to do the final tidy end up of the wiring. We're going to do our final voltage checks on everything to make sure everything's working within design parameters and get the volume control wired up with the RCA jacks, get that part of the build finished up, and then we'll be ready to put this thing on the audio analyzer suite. So let's get busy finishing this amp up. Okay, so let me show you the last little bit of the wiring we did here. The last video I showed you, this is coming from our B+. So this has got the full B+, on it, which turned out to be right at 308 volts with the 5Y3 rectifier tube. Same thing here. And then we have this little 8K resistor here. We're using a smaller, I think they had a 27K. I went down to an 8K and then it goes to, it's kind of hard to see this, terminal up under here is the plate of the top triode in the SRPP and then so this is the dropping resistor and then this is the decoupling capacitor that goes between the plate and the ground which is this terminal back here let me see if I can tilt this down and show you that a little better so this is the ground terminal right here and then we have this 2.2k which goes from the cathode, which is this terminal right here. You can see it better on this tube. That's the cathode. This wire comes up here to this terminal. We have our 2.2K, and then we have our 100 UF bypass cap going from this terminal to that terminal, and then we also have the ground for this hooked up there too. So this terminal right here is the cathode of the upper triode, and that's where we pull the signal off. So it comes around to this terminal right here, and then this is the coupling cap that goes over to the grid of the output tube. And then we have the same thing over here. This is the cathode of the upper triode, and this wire comes right here. And then this is our coupling cap that goes to the grid of the output tube. And then this is our 470K grid leak resistor for the output tube. Comes to grid. This is a ground terminal, that's a ground terminal. And finally, this is the grid of the lower triode, which is where the input signal goes. Underneath here, you have a 1 meg grid leak resistor. Same thing over here on this one. Got a 1 meg grid leak resistor that goes from the grid to the ground. As you can see, it's got this little ground wire here that connects over to this tag strip's ground, which then goes from here to there, from here over to the remote ground point in the front of the amplifier. And then these are the shielded signal wires coming over from the volume control. And that's the signal, that's the ground, signal, ground. And that gets the signal to the input tube that then gets amplified by this driver circuit and sent to the grid of the output tube. And then over here, we have our volume control. I've showed you how to wire these things up in the past. If you haven't seen that, I'll link a video to how to wire up a volume control. And then I put this liquid electrical tape over all this stuff to just kind of hold everything in place. And then it comes up and let me get a zoom out shot of the whole amp and show you some few other things. So then we have the volume control up here in the front. And these are the shielded wires that come around here and go to our RCA jacks here in the back. So the other thing I didn't show you in the previous video was both of these ground terminals here and here. They have a small wire that comes over here and connects to our star ground point back here in the back of the amp 
and that's for safety reasons. If something ever happens and the output transformer has an internal short and it tries to put the high voltage DC onto the speaker outlets, it will blow the fuse. So the other thing that I've done here, this is the 6.3 volt heater wiring and kind of zigzags around and these wires here are just going to this meter which i'll go over in a second so there's really not in the signal path this one's in the signal path but it's going at exactly 90 degrees to this heater and it's also elevated that far above these heater wires you can see with this tool here how high that is and the same thing over here we've got some vertical distance here between these two wires which is the power and ground to the front end tube and they are also elevated and they're at 90 degrees these heaters so 6.3 heater goes around here comes up here comes to this tube and then goes across and then comes up to this tube and then I put the terminals for the heaters facing forward so they'd have a shorter path and can stay away from the signal and the same thing back here where the heater is to this signal it's got a vertical distance of about that far between this shielded wire and the heater so trying to keep those as far apart as possible the other wiring that we added was the meter wiring and we went from this terminal here over here to this side of this switch and then we went from here to this terminal right here which is the cathode side of the output tube before the dropping resistor and then the center of this comes up here to the meter and then that's the ground and it comes over to our ground point here and so another thing i also got wired up something i do in all my amps to power the led in this indicator switch i like using filtered dc and not ac and so i put this little tiny bridge rectifier here and there's a filter cap there's a 3k dropping resistor to get the illumination levels where I want them. And then these run around here and up to the little angel eye LED on the front switch. And it gives it a nice soft glow. And I think that's it. I think the rest of the wiring we had gone over. One of the things I do in my amps too, things like this heater wiring, these long runs, I get a little bit of some sort of contact adhesive. This is a brand I really like. It's called Walder's Goo, and it's like a rubberized contact cement. And I learned about this stuff from my model train hobby, but this is some really good contact cement that stays flexible. And so put a little dab here, put a couple dabs along on this heater, to make sure that they stay in place. I also put a little bit here so this wire will stay attached right here and I put a little dab right there on the top of this pot for this wire just to keep things in place and also put some over here on these shielded wires going up the RCA jacks. I glued it to the underside of this little lip and then I put a little tack of it over here on this side too just to kind of hold things in place and I like using contact cement so that if the chassis gets warm it doesn't go away like hot melt glue might and then also put a little bit of it glue on the top of this cap to the chassis over here for this little regulator for the illuminator light so I did power this thing up and I checked all the voltages starting out with the upper tubes like I said I ended up using a 5y3 rectifier tube to lower the B plus a little bit and it's capable of 125 milliamps of current 
is supposed to be its rating, and there's 120 in the amp. So we are under the rating of the rectifier tube. Pretty sure if you use like a new old stock one, you're not going to have any problem. So we ended up with around 310 volts on the B+, plus, which is right here. And then at the plate of the output tubes, we had 304 and 304. And then over here on the cathodes, we've got 44 and 44. So that means we got 260 volts across the tube. And with the current calculations with a 750 ohm resistor, it's a breath over 15 watts of dissipation on the tube. And I firmly believe these tubes, especially the modern ones, are rated at a higher than 15 watts. So I'm not concerned about it being running at 100%. On the front end, again, we've got 308-ish here, 310, around that range. With this dropping resistor of 8K, we ended up with just a breath over 300 volts on the plates of the upper triode. And then on the cathode, it's got, it's right at 148. And then we got 1.7 volts on the cathode of the lower triode, which is all right where I wanted to see them. So we've got all the voltages tested, the meter's working. One thing I may do is try putting a, a small cap across this meter because when you activate the meter, it like jumps around. And so I want to dampen that just a breath. So I may put a small film cap across there just to kind of dampen that meter a little bit. But otherwise, I'm ready to hook this thing up to the audio analyzer suite and see what kind of performance it has. So let's get this thing hooked up and give it a test run. Well, I'm glad all the voltages ended up being where we wanted to see them at. We got the rest of the input wiring done up. We're now ready to go test this thing on the audio analyzer suite and see what kind of power versus distortion and frequency response and all that stuff. I'm really hopeful everything turns out good. And I use this little flute meter. This is a 17B plus. Honestly, I'm not even sure if they make this same model, but it's been a really good meter. There's definitely some cheaper versions out there. I'll put some links below on you know a couple of different types of multimeters if you don't have one. Definitely need something like that when you're finishing up a build like this to make sure the voltages are all where they should be. And I just this little amp turned out really nice. I hope it sounds as good as it looks. And thanks for following me through on this series. Again, thanks to all you subscribers, Patreon supporters, folks that are members of the channel, people that make donations at my website to help me keep doing this stuff and making content for you guys to enjoy. I really appreciate all of your support. And I hope we can hit 20K subs soon. I think we're close. But anyway, thanks again. And the next segment, we'll be putting this thing on the audio analyzer suite and checking the performance, and then I'll let you know what it sounds like. So until then, have a nice day.